Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Walking Dead. A lot of stuff went down this episode, so let's break things down bit by bit. I mean, first of all, let's kind of focus on, obviously, the biggest hits, and that's, first of all, let's talk about Michonne and Rick. Obviously, dealing with the ramifications, last episode, saying goodbye to Carl. It's still a fresh wound to them. Having to leave Alexandria behind, trying their best, but, like, there's so much damage, and the place is being overrun with walkers. There's even a point where you see Michonne trying to shut the gate, but it's kind of, you know, jammed, and there's walkers piling up, and it's just, like, probably just trying to at least, like, okay, at the very least, if I can close this, maybe it might be overrun with walkers, but at the very least, hey... We can come back here and clear it out, that type of thing, but sadly it's not the case. It's just one thing on top of another representing the fact is their home is gone. Then there's like that little gazebo that like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, that's where Carl used to sit. And it's just like she's trying, she and Rick are trying to put it out, but there's like too many walkers. So she just wants something to remain because she ended up seeing that little handprint him and, and um, Judith has left. And it's just like our home. Because the sad thing is, it's really depressing, a little bit morbid, but it kind of flows to the show. That means eventually they will probably dig up Carl's body and eat it just because it's over. I mean, to be fair, he's dug up d deep in the ground, so I don't know. Maybe if they dig, if they bury you deep enough, it won't be an issue. But still, that's something, you know, a body left around eventually, especially because his body, sadly, is pretty fresh. So, because it's super morbid to think about. But it's just like this, and, and even more so the irony behind it as they leave, you see Michonne looking at the sign and it's like, oh, Alexandria saves on it. Just like this place has been their home for such a long time is now gone. I mean, because this was their first place subsequently since, you know, the real place that they grew roots at and created a home. It's the first place subsequently since the pre prison back at the, during like the first half of season four is like when everything kind of went to shit there uh, because of the governor and everything. So it's like their home is gone. Did on top of that, you know, also trying to figure out what Carl meant by his last words, like kind of make peace. Should we give up or what? You know, and even Rick kind of like because you see him as a little torn just because it's like it's so free, still dealing with Carl's loss. But also what Carl said, there's the letters and everything. And I'm going to skip right to it is to me the most powerful thing. And what's that was conversation with Negan. He ends up telling Negan it's like Carl's dead. And it's like, holy crap. And you actually see it affects Negan because Negan actually like Carl. There's even a line from him being like, that kid of Rick's, he's something special. He's going to be something special in this world. And the moment he's saying that, you're like, ooh, that's just because you don't know. I wasn't expecting him to find out under these circumstances. But I, like the moment like... Rick uh, Rick took the letters and walked away. I was like, oh, he's going to contact everyone. He didn't. Um, but uh, the first person he contacted with Negan, because I guess it was just kind of like he was trying to roll everything. You know, it's all like happening. He's just it's all rolling in his head. So ultimately, he ends up reading it to Negan. When only tell him is like Carl wanted us to make peace, but he's like, I can't do that. My boy is going. I want you dead. But then, you know, you have Negan, I mean, being inquiring about it. It's like, what happened to him? It's like, my son died. Like, he got bit because he tried to save someone, showing you how much of a good person. You know, it's, it's like, oh, my son was a good person. He got bit trying to save someone. But at the same time, you know, that kind of fits what Negan in his mind is trying to do. You know, argument could be made that is what he's doing. Whatever the case may be, however you fall on that. But it's a situation of, like, that coincides with what the saviors do, doing, you know, saving people. Like I said, Carl, I mean, uh... Negan had plans for Carl. He's like, oh, he's the future because it's just, you know, you saw something there immediately between them. Like he, he took always took a special interest in Carl. So and even kind of turning it around on Reckon is like, honestly, this is all your fault. You want to act like this is me. You don't want to start it stuff. I killed your friends represent, you know, uh, talking about Glenn and Abraham so that you would fall in line. But you didn't. You sat back up and you fall. This would all be fine if you hadn't done what you did and now your son is dead and the reason why he's dead is because you weren't there to stop him from doing something stupid so don't try to blame this on me talking about the fact that you're going to kill me because this is your fault you failed as a leader and you failed as a father and i'm like oh and the sad thing is rick doesn't really respond other than like oh, i'm gonna kill you he doesn't tell him to shut up or doesn't you know stops listening it's like no he keeps listening he doesn't smash the radio or anything because the sad thing is rick already feels like that he already thinks like that and so hearing negan saying all that is just reconfirming something he's already feeling and he's already thinking because obviously this is going to fuel him going forward because it wasn't because of Negan what happened to Carl it was actually just the way the world was that ultimately ended up taking Carl out and it's even something Negan was kind of touching on and it's something I kind of touched on last episode that Carl's whole situation is also to teach you like that could happen to anybody know how well trained you are in this whole situation you think you won't get 
caught and killed by this world, you can, no matter how long you've been in or how skilled you are. Like, that's what that kind of, like, a veteran like Carl who's been in this world, grew up in this world, even he kind of got, found himself in this situation, you know? So, and even Negan's kind of like, yeah, we never know when our card's going to get punched in this world and everything, so... I'm so curious to see what Rick does going forward because it is the fact is that Carl wanted peace, but at the same time, it's like, I don't think he's going to, like I brought that up last episode too, I just don't see Rick giving Negan a chance. It's like, no matter what Carl wants, he's just so filled with rage right now. It's like, you know, but like I said, at the same time, it's also rage towards himself. So he needs, he's lashing out against Negan because it's also because he's mad at himself because he feel like he failed, you know? So I don't know. I am curious to know, will Rick kind of like send, because like there were letters written to everybody. So I'm curious, like, will Rick like signal everybody on the radio and kind of read what the note said? I don't know. It seems like this whole situation with Negan might have been just a special thing. He'll probably wait till Hilltop to tell him, but we just kind of have to wait and see on that, so... I'm curious to see where that all takes us going forward with this. Like I said, it was sad because Negan legitimately looked bummed out. He's like, man, that that sucks, man. I'm, I am, he's like, because for you, Rick, that's going to stay with you forever. This is going, it's going to stay with me for a while. Because like I said, he legitimately liked Carl. He did see a lot of potential in Carl. So, which like, I, I think I pointed out, like I talked about in the past, it's like kind of like where the comic book is heading. Because I remember seeing somebody kind of commenting on the fact is, I don't know what the circ exact circumstances were, but apparently in the comic books, like, Carl is kind of becoming potentially the next Negan in the comic book. So it's just kind of an interesting thing. And I, I felt like you could kind of see that potentially happening just because it's like, like I say, because he took so much interest in Carl, almost like he was telling Carl, like, hey, like, um, you know, be my protege type of thing. You know, but, I mean, I don't know. At this point in time, with the way the TV show is, I mean, that kind of doesn't matter anymore. But still, it's just kind of an interesting thing to just kind of know. But nevertheless, um, there's a lot to go about. Like, I, I appreciate how they went about this episode. Um, last episode, we kind of bounced back and forth between two places, mainly with the kingdom and what was going on between Michonne, Rick, and Carl. So we kind of bouncing back and forth between those two. But this episode was kind of bouncing all a little bit around some of the areas, kind of seeing how everyone is and what's going on. Um, a big thing in this episode was the whole Simon situation because Simon kept getting put in position in it, like, because he's very outspoken. He's just like, no, 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 no. We shouldn't be giving these people any more chances. Basically, let's wipe this slate clean in the sense of let's kill everybody, not like, oh, let's forgive everything. It's like, no, let's kill everyone, move on, find a different community who could be a lot more listening to what we have to say because the fact of the matter is we've tried over and over again and they don't listen, you know? Which Negan's like, shut your damn mouth, because the way we do things is we save people. He's still kind of on the train of like, let's kill Rick. He didn't say it expressly, but I'm sure Ezekiel and Maggie are still up there too. It's like, take them out, everyone else will fall in line, because obviously they're the leaders of each respective group. Because Negan's still in that situation of like, we care about people. And that's the thing about it. I feel like, I don't know, like, I was super anti-Negan before, but now it's kind of like, I don't know, like, when you, sp more time you spend with him, you kind of realize, like, you understand where he's coming from, yes, he's not the most, like I said, it's just kind of an interesting thing, because it's like, we kind of got a deeper look in that world, like, last season, so you got to understand, like, oh yeah, it's not a good place necessarily like all the stuff he does his whole wife situation so it's like there's not all good there but from the outside you see the good you see the way he talks like the good leader that he is but at the same time you realize he's super messed up so it's it's give and take with his character and i think that's such a fascinating thing because you're like you want to hate the saviors which you rightfully should but at the same time you're like but you understand where they're coming from and it's like they care about people people are a resource people are something that should be protected simon's like no screw these people they're dead they should die but negan's like no like, you know, if you got something to say, say it, but, like, didn't want to listen to anything. Even when the body from the hilltop showed up in that ba um, casket, a uh, wooden box, and it was just kind of like Negan still felt the same way. And it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. Like, no matter how different people might have their opinions about things. Like, because I think one of the people that will probably be super against it is Gavin. Like, Gavin's probably, like, the most level-headed with this whole situation. I'd say he probably sides with Negan the most. And I'll probably make the argument that Simon is probably the one that does it the least. I am curious, though, like, because that wasn't, he wasn't the one behind that Alexandria, because I know Simon went to uh, Hilltop. So, not unless they just haven't gotten back yet, but, like, the whole, like, Dwi um, yeah, Dwight betrayal, I don't know if that's come up yet. It didn't seem like it because the conversation didn't lead to that. So he might not know that Dwight sold him out and everything as working with Alexandria and all that. So, 
But what really took me by surprise is when he went to go visit, visit Jadis because it's like, hey, give him our standard deal. We sacrifice one of them, kind of the whole situation like he did at the beginning with um, Abraham and eventually Glenn. But that'll just kind of make a, another point as well with the whole uh, Alexandria crew and everything. So it's more like, OK, then we get the weapons and we get them because, you know, once again, people are a resource. And I, I, I got to give it up to Jadis because of what she did. Talking about like, no, we we were actually bringing Rick to you. And Simon's like, bullshit. And then also like Jadis being like, kind of being a smart ass when it came to certain things. There's her responses. And it's like, oh, you're not apologetic. And so he started killing two of her people. And she screams. And you see she kind of breaks character a little bit. Because it seems like she was kind of doing the whole Ezekiel thing too. But Simon didn't stop. Just because he was so... It was he was kind of imposing his own will because he doesn't like the way Negan's running things. But rather, I mean, that's the question. Like, you don't like Negan. Why don't you try and take him out? That's the question. And I guess I guess for Simon, it's like if he did take Negan out, like no one would support him. Like no one would support like him usurping the saviors like that. So even if he did, it wouldn't work out for his favor in the long run. He'd probably just end up dead himself. I don't know. But I, it's even more so than anything, it was a combination of them plus having to like bow to what Negan wants. And it's like, this isn't a smart move. Negan's just going to ruin everything. He's going to get a lot more of our people killed. So maybe there's that aspect of it. But either way, like he just ended up wiping out the entire group. And not just killing them. They all, well, they weren't like dead, dead in the sense of like brain dead. It was just like shot them so that they ended up coming back, coming back as walkers. And Jadis is the only one of our group left. Rick and Michonne showed up. Um, I can only assume, like, Simon and them set that up so that basically, even if someone came there to find out the truth about the whole, um, her people, Jadis's people situation, that they'd get locked in with all the walkers and end up, like, the truth would die with them, and that if anyone came there and actually pushed past it anyway, you know, either the pathway would be blocked so there'd be no getting through, or they'd be like, oh man, something else happened to him. They probably wouldn't associate the same thing. I don't know. I am curious to know what Simon's going to do about this whole situation, like, going forward. Because he lied to Negan, like, oh yeah, like, everything's fine, honky-dory. Like, yeah, I I uh, gave him the deal like you said we would. And it's like, how are you going to keep that quiet? I mean, to be fair, luckily, like, they got all their weapons, so it's not that big of a deal, but those are still people and resources. I'm curious to see what happens when Negan finds out, because I was I was almost halfway expecting Rick to kind of bring it up on the very like, wait, what? Yeah, Jadis and all her people, you had him killed, and then he's like, oh, Simon, and then he kills Simon, but maybe that's something we'll deal with later on. I, just, I know he's going to find out at some point, I'm just curious, like, how he's going to find out, you know? It's going to have to be somebody telling him, either one of Simon's people breaking or something or what. I don't know. I feel like one of his people might break and sell him out because it's like, yeah, he didn't follow your orders. I'm sorry type of thing. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe people start whispering, start talking, and then eventually get back to Negan. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I actually feel bad for Jadis because it's like she kind of put up this like for her. It's like me and my we we wanted to create a world, just something that was ours, kind of like. It was like this place became our we became the art pieces, essentially, you know, and he's like I said, she drops the whole character and everything just because she was trying to change just like Ezekiel was. And they all did. So. And it's just sad. And Rick left her there. It's like, I didn't want to kill her. He's like, I just left her there because it's just, I just want her to be away from her. Because it's kind of interesting because I, originally when they went to go see Jadis, it was like, oh, we got to protect him because obviously the. um Saviors are going to go after them, too, because they saw Jadis and her group with me. So, obviously, they're next. And it's like, there are people now. They're not theirs. They're ours. But the moment he found out, like, basically, Jadis serves no more purpose because it's like, hey, this is all, like, basically, you brought this upon yourself because of your treachery, your double-crossing, your triple-crossing. Because she even, like, made the deal beyond Rick's back just trying to ease things over like i said because this is our first time ever seeing her in that state because she's always yeah she might have a little bit a little caught off guard but she's always been calm cool and collected most times we see her and in this particular case she was completely you know like i said that whole character persona she created was dropped and so because for rick it's just the fact is that none of this would be happening if it was the fact of the matter it's like hey you were a good ally we you know it's like but you betrayed us and then when you got your chance again rick doesn't notice but you were going to betray them again so it's kind of like also at this first 
point in time you serve no purpose because you're all on your own your entire army's going they've got your guns too so it's like you serve no purpose to us so but michelle was kind of like well maybe this you know and i think that's what kind of got him to talk to negan was the whole situation of like this is what you know carl was talking about we have a choice and like they left her back i was actually halfway expecting them at some point for rick to come back and actually help her but he didn't he left her there it's like okay she'll fend for herself she'll she'll survive but i don't know i just like I say, especially, like I say, it's just, he's so conflicted because it's like he wants to do what Carl said, Carl's last words, but at the same time, he's just so mad right now. He's not willing to. He doesn't know how to with everything that's going on. It's like there can't be any fixing that, you know? That that rage is there and just like everything sucks. So it's like there's no fixing that. So, but um, what took me by it was suck for Jadis is the fact is that she did also have to watch her people die twice, like that, and also like that little grinder where it's like they all fell in and just turned into essentially goop, uh, meat goop, and then you know just tears watching all those people die again, um. And so you see her like eating like a box of like applesauce or something by herself. I'm curious to see what happens. Either she's going to go after Negan herself or she's going to go after Rick. Like she's the only survivor of her group. But I'm curious to see if she ends up like what she decides to do. Because she might go after Rick too because it's like, Rick, you screwed me over. You left me there. So like everything that happened to my people is because you came into our lives. We were fine by ourselves until you decided that you wanted to turn against Negan and everything. So might kind of go back to the whole fact is like, oh, it's actually your fault, Rick. So it's like, you got you basically got my people killed. You know, I'm sure Jadis is kind of in that similar situation. Like she feels responsible because of all her dealings and stuff, wanting to be different, um, wanted to create this world for them that she you know, overplayed her hand and ended up getting all her people killed. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what her next move is all from this all. Whether, like, Rick will eventually go back for her and they'll bring her in. Because the fact is, you did say that they were your people. So even with this, under these circumstances, should you still bring her in because she is one of your people and she will die on her own, you know? So I don't know. I'm curious to see what uh, happens with that later on. Um, another thing in this story is the whole... Uh, Enid and Aaron situation. I won't lie to you. I had completely forgotten Aaron and Enid were in that whole Oceanside uh, situation. So that kind of took me by surprise too. Um, so it's like, oh, what's going to happen to us? You have Enid being like not apologetic about it. It's because like, oh, the way your grandma went at me, like went about this whole situation, I had no choice but to put her down. And it's kind of like the whole conversation. It's an interesting conversation that kind of gets brought up. It's like the fact of the matter is, well, you shouldn't live the way you do because ultimately it came down to Cindy and Cindy decided to let them live. But it's like the fact of the matter is the reason why everything happened the way it did is because of your mentality that you're not going to like any stranger to come across. What's the first thing you do? You try and kill them. It's like we at the very least know who we're fighting. We're fighting the saviors. We know who our enemy is. You you don't like you treat everyone like an enemy. It's like when even when there's allies in front of you, all you had to do was work with us. But you're so keen on being separated. And whether that's from everything that went down with the saviors, just because it happened with the saviors doesn't mean it's going to happen with us. Because the fact of the matter is Alexandria was kind of built on the whole aspect of like, no, we find other people. We bring them in, you know, and ask them the questions and decide whether or not we are going to bring them into our group or we're going to go our separate ways. So it's that situation of like they're not Ocean society isn't even willing to do that. Side note, I just thought about this. Um, is it? I'm, I don't know if I'm wrong. Is the actress who works at Oceanside? Isn't one of them the actress who plays Piper on Agents of Shield? I think it's the same actress. I'm not, I'm not sure, which is interesting considering the actress who plays uh, Michonne is in Black Panther. So it's just kind of interesting. Walking Dead. Um, Marvel crossover like that, it's just, it's just kind of interesting. I just couldn't help but notice that. Because I was watching, I was like, right, isn't actors who play Piper in this too? But uh, nevertheless, that was just kind of where my um, mind went. It's actually kind of another interesting thing too, just kind of like on the same lines. It's just kind of added uh, to a tidbit of trivia, if you didn't know. Uh, the actor who plays Tyrese also went off and did another kind of superhero thing. He played, uh, forgot what his character's name was. Wasn't it Tobias? Um, on Arrow, so back uh, last season, so it was just I don't know, that was kind of a little uh, interesting thing. I felt like it's included there, but nevertheless, um, so I'm curious to see what happens to the whole Oceanside thing. You have Aaron stand behind. Granted, he's not going too close because it's like, oh, we will kill you next time. Huh? So the question is, like, will he be able to convince them to fight? Because every attempt to convince them to fight has failed. It's like we've given you all we can, so leave it at that. So. 
because it's like, oh, what do we do if we do win? It's like, if you do win, fine, tell us. But other than that, just like stay away. So I, I don't know. It's also interesting because Enid was basically like, if you kill us for what happened, it won't bring your grandma back, which is kind of interesting, which kind of plays in the whole situation of like, well, because I'm about to say like, I mean, everything that the saviors as well as Negan did, like Glenn and Abraham, what about that? There's a whole Carl situation, but then again, I'm like, that wasn't because of them. That was because of the walkers. That was just because of this world. So I don't, I don't know. Like it is, it's uh, completely, it's like a apples and oranges type of situation, you know, so. I'm just curious to see how that all, uh, whole thing plays out. Especially for Aaron, because Aaron's like, oh yeah, I want to go back home. I mean, sadly, they don't know about the situation back home. No one does. Like, the only people that know are the people heading to Hilltop now. And that's when everyone's going to find out. I uh, think that's when the people from the kingdom are going to find. Because basically, everyone's going to be in one spot. Because uh, the group of the uh, the kingdom is being, you know... I would assume because Hilltop's the only safe place left that hasn't been destroyed. So, and then they're all going to be in one spot. And so it's, I'm curious to see how this all goes. Uh, it's kind of interesting because now it's down to one and one because you have the entirety of uh, the kingdom, Alexandria and Hilltop in one spot while, all, while you continue to have the saviors only in one spot too. So I am curious to see what goes on in the next episode. Caught a little glimpse of uh, next week's episode, but obviously I won't go too deeply into it, just in case you want to kind of go into the episode not, not knowing anything at all. So, like I said, I don't even caught a glimpse, but a certain character kind of popped up, so I thought that was kind of interesting to see where their story is going to take us. Like I said, won't go too much into that. So, we'll just have to wait till next week's episode to see, like, how this all plays out. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good.